Alrighty, son of a gun. I didn't do it last week, so I feel obligated because, like I've said before, I watch so you don't have to. Here you go, raw review. Let's just roulette our way through this crap. You kick off the show with a tribute, We Stand With Las Vegas. That's great. Everybody have your moment of silence, pretend like you give a crap, and then go right back to not exploring any of the deeper issues that could have potentially led to this and do absolutely nothing about it. But we can all have the moment of silence, so that way we can do all these thoughts and prayers that do nothing to solve the issue. Let's move the hell on. Your opening match was Braun Strowman versus Seth Rollins. And I don't know about you, I'm so glad that they didn't take the Universal title off of Brock Lesnar. I'm so glad that they didn't have Braun Strowman win, so that way he could wrestle a random match against Seth Rollins and not be the champion. Ooh, Dean Ambrose. Ooh, Seth Rollins. Ah, who gives a crap? And then to top it all off, the WWE saying, hey, you know what, Piggy James was a lot of fun several years back. We don't have Lay Cool anymore, so what can we do to throw jabs and snarky shit Mickey James way? Oh, that's right, let's emphasize how old she is compared to the rest of the divas. We're going to have walkers, we're going to have depends, we're going to have all types of crap. At least, if anything else... This is an avenue for Mickey James to get a Raw Women's Championship title shot. And if that's what it takes from a creative standpoint, then I guess so freaking be it, because at least it means Mickey James is on TV, so at least we don't forget Mickey James is actually with the WWE. We don't forget which brand she's on, which, by the way, if you didn't remember, you didn't know, you do now. It is Raw. But why, ultimately, do they always have to do some dumb, crazy shit with Mickey James, and it's not her being crazy, borderline lesbian that got her over in the first goddamn place. And furthermore, such what in the fuck are Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss friends again? Did I miss the memo? Did I miss something? Oh, who gives a crap? Because clearly this company doesn't. They don't care if they insult your intelligence. They don't care about any of that. They think you are stupid enough to take the shit that they shovel to you eat it, and like the taste of it. And unfortunately, for the dwindling amount of people that still continue to watch this hot garbage every single week, that is exactly what happens. Speaking of hot garbage, why, oh why in the world do we continue to have Elias go out there, set up the fact that he is going to give us a live musical performance, and then ultimately we get it interrupted once again, this time by, of all people, Titus O'Neil. Look, it's one thing to say, who wants to walk with Elias, but at this point in time, as quick as the walk is, you might as well be in a full-on Usain Bolt type of sprint. WWE, again, I implore you, I beg you, come to your senses. The guy can get heat. Stop undercutting the damn heat. I am right. You are fucking wrong. Stop being morons. Start letting him perform his entire musical act. Not everything needs to be a match. Not every guy needs to get over or actually does get over as a wrestler first or a wrestler at all. If this guy can get more over than 90% of your performers and never hit a wrist lock or a headlock, then that's what the fuck you should be doing. Stop undercutting the heat. Stop undercutting the easiest, simplest way for the guy to get over because ultimately the WWE ruins everything and they're going to do their best to try and ruin this guy. And now you would think with Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy's out of the picture with the shoulder injury, he's going to be out for an extended period of time, here's a perfect opportunity to dive right into having him team up with somebody else, in this particular case, Jason Jordan, so that way we could waste time with them and the fucking bald jobbers, who some of you are going to geek out to with their stuff from Southpaw Regional Wrestling. Southpaw Regional Wrestling. You wish it was WWE, but it's not. If you want a tagline, boom, I just gave you a freaking tagline. Jason Jordan, who instead of them doing the right thing where there's all types of potential and all types of possibilities of healing the guy out, they are going to continue to force him a certain way because, again, that's what the WWE does. And all the while, when it comes to Matt Hardy, this company will not get behind him as a singles guy because all these years later they still think he's best in a tag team situation because again 
your roster of superstars is so otherworldly that you just don't have any place for Matt Hardy as a singles guy, right? Give me a freaking break. And speaking of give me a freaking break, I don't want to come off as that guy, even though I usually don't care. And you know what? Honestly, in this particular case, I don't either. So disregard what I just said before. It is great and wonderful to hear stories of courageous people, and in particular, these courageous women that fought and fought successfully against breast cancer. And this is not about them. I wish them nothing but the best. I am happy for them. And at least they were able to beat an insidious disease that claims far too many people, whether that be breast cancer or just cancer in general. So many people are more concerned about keeping up with the slut bags and all this other freaking Twitter crap in freaking pop culture than fighting something that has literally affected just about every single one of us directly or indirectly. It doesn't matter. It's touched us all. Kind of like if you were a little boy in the Penn State football locker room. They touched you all. But of course, here's WWE in October and you have issues with filling your arenas with people. You have issues with the audience dwindling and then losing more viewership to Monday Night Football. So you decide one of the best ways to get eyeballs on your product is to do this damn segment with Dana Warrior and make it about these survivors, but in particular, the Susan G. Komen Foundation and their race for the cure bullshit. It's all about a race to get more fucking money to keep up the infrastructure of their charity. Do you really think that Susan G. Komen truly wants to solve the issue of breast cancer and truly wants to cure breast cancer once and for all? If you think that you're crazy, ding dong, dumb dicks, they want money and they want that disease to continue to be an issue so that way they can continue to exist and ultimately get more money. That's what it's about, period. And this whole segment was just cringe to watch. And I was a huge Warrior fan growing up as a kid. But let's not pretend that he was a great guy. It's just like someday when I pass, I don't want people creating illusions about how I was this or how I was that. Keep it real, the good and the bad. If you want to respect my memory, that's how you do it. You keep it straight up and honest and truthful about me. You don't bullshit and pretend I was somebody that I wasn't. The Ultimate Warrior was an insensitive guy. He was a jerk. He was an ass. He was a homophobe. He was a lot of different things. He was a bit of a hateful guy, frankly. So let's not pretend that Warrior was some great hero to every freaking buddy because he clearly wasn't. I'm sorry if that offends anybody's sensibilities, but that's the fucking truth. Furthermore, it offends my sensibilities to see organizations like Susan G. Komen be prostituted out there by WWE for a, hey, look at us and the philanthropy that we do, then it's great for business. Ding dong, dumb dicks, it's not helping your bottom line. Focus on your product, you jackasses, because instead... When you do that, then you have to figure out how you're going to get to forcing the shield back together because you want Roman Reigns to get some of that positive buzz and feeling of being associated with Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. They won't boom as much because he's with his buddies and we can all go fisting together. Oh, give me a fucking break. You want to talk about the epitome, the height of forcing an angle with a clear intention in his mind. WWE, I see through your bullshit and I know a lot of other people do too. And while some of you may live off of the nostalgia of the shield being back together once again, I give it one big ock. And also, when it comes to ock, with Sasha and Bailey, either shit or get off the pot. Either do something with these two or stop doing it. I don't know what the fuck you're doing other than just this random women's tag match. Either shit or get off the pot. Frankly, honestly, the single most interesting thing that happened on this entire show was buried in the main event. And frankly, with Raw today, being in the main event is buried. But at least I can say it is ultimately the main event. And the only reason it is the main event is because as much as all the people in the company don't like Enzo Amore, even though they're trying to undercut the guy who was moving a lot of merch and actually was really over as a babyface by putting out all the backstage shit and now kind of quasi turning him fucking heel because that makes a lot of business sense. At least I could say this the second week in a row, the Cruiserweights main evented Raw directly because of Enzo Amore. At least they were in a segment that mattered. At least now you have a reason to kind of sort of give a shit about the Cruiserweights because you have finally somebody in the Cruiserweights division as a cruiserweight champion that frankly the company could get behind and you can give a shit about 
And his new opponent, Callisto, it's like, oh my god, it's almost like he should have been in the cruiserweight division the entire fucking time. The whole crap about the contract and they touched me, so they all lost their title shot, they touch me again, they get fired. It's like, holy shit. It took me three hours to get to the most interesting thing of the show. The show sucked. The Monday Night Football game between the Chiefs and the Redskins was much better. Um, and that shouldn't surprise anybody. It can't really be that hard to do a decent wrestling show. I don't give a crap about the excuses about the length of the show. I don't give a crap about the excuses of this or that. WWE equals world's worst excuses. There is no excuse for this. If I had to give you one reaction to sum up my thoughts on this week's Raw, which largely were, is that every time I flipped to Raw Monday night, I was fighting sleep and had to flip back to the Chiefs Redskins game in order to wake back up, the one reaction, the one thought I have is as follows. <sighs> Nighty night time. That's it, I'm done. This is OTRS Central, and remember, it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Later.